See first there are, I'll tell you the levels. The lowest is District Consumer Forum. Right, District Consumer Redressal Forum. State Commission. At the state level we have got commission. At the national level also we have got commission. Right. District Consumer Forum. Cases compensation up to 20 lakhs. Cases for which the compensation is up to 20 lakhs. They can go to district forum. If the compensation claimed is between 20 lakhs to 1 crore. Then they have to go to state commission. If the compensation claimed is more than 1 crore, they have to go to the National Commission. Right? So, this is the power. Less than 20 lakh district level, 20 lakhs to 1 crore that is state level, more than 1 crore it is national level. Right? At any level, if the patient is not satisfied with the judgment, the patient can go to the higher level for the appeal. Right? And if from the National Commission, the patient can go, go to the appeal to the Supreme Court. Okay, so this is regarding COPRA. This is regarding COPRA. Impotency. The inability of the person to achieve and maintain penile erection. Right? So it applies to male. If the inability to achieve and maintain penile erection in males, it is called impotency. Right? Sterility. The person is unable to beget children. Right? If the person is unable to beget children, right then we call it as sterility right this is the term which is applied to both male and female frigidity it is female sexual coldness right the female is sexually cold to the stimulus right cold to the sexual stimulus we call it as frigidity right satyriasis it is increased sexual desire among males, right? Increased sexual desire among males, it is called satyriasis. There is one more term like this that is called nymphomania. Nymphomania is the increased sexual desire among females. That is called nymphomania. IUD, intrauterine death of fetus. What are the signs of intrauterine death of fetus? It is maceration. Right, maceration, mummification, mummification, and rigor mortis. If the just born fetus shows any of this sign, then we can say the baby died, should have died inside the uterus. Maceration is an example of autolysis. Maceration is an example of autolysis. Right, there are a few points which are important from maceration. The earliest sign. Right, it is skin slippage, reddening. This can be seen as early as 12 hours. Right, what are the radiological signs? When you see radiological signs, Robert sign, you know, it is the presence of gas in the great vessels like iota. We call it as Robert sign, and this can also be seen as early as 12 hours. Right, Spalding sign. Spalding sign, it is the overriding of cranial vault bones. When the cranial vault bones override like this, right, overriding of cranial vault bones. This is called Spalding sign. Right, this can also be seen around 4 to 7 days. Spalding. There can be ball sign. Ball sign is nothing but hyperflexion of spine. Right? The baby's spine already will be flexed, but in this case, it will be going for hyperflexion. It is called ball sign. Okay? So, these are the signs we have to uh, know in maceration. Very important. Now, talking about MTP, you know, that is Medical Termination of Pregnancy Act 1971. We know, we need to know the indications of MTP. Right? First one is eugenic. Eugenic is any genetic disease of the baby, we have to do MTP. Humanitarian. Humanitarian is rape due to pregnancy due to rape. Rape resulting in pregnancy, we have to do MTP. 
therapeutic if there is any maternal disease right if there is any maternal disease affecting the life of the mother then we have to do mtp socio economic right for socio economic means any failure of contraception failure of contraception will be socio economic cause then we have to do mtp many a times they have asked questions on the minimum age for giving consent the minimum age for giving consent is 18 years if the girl is less than 18 years and she is pregnant we cannot do mtp with her consent right then we have to get consent from the guardian right if it is less than 12 weeks one doctor is enough to do mtp if 12 weeks to 20 weeks two doctors opinion two doctors opinion right and after 20 weeks we should not do mtp except in emergency right okay now what about the consent of the husband husband's consent not necessary right husband consent is not necessary for mtp we can do consent only with the consent of the women pregnant woman now if there is any abortion if there is any termination done outside the purview of mtp we call it as criminal abortion right criminal abortion unlawful abortion this unlawful abortion is legally termed as voluntary miscarriage voluntary miscarriage is nothing but criminal abortion what are the sections that are giving punishment for this criminal abortion 312 ipc 313 ipc 314 ipc 312 ipc punishment for criminal abortion punishment for conducting abortion right punishment for conducting criminal abortion with the without the consent of the mother without the consent of mother pregnant mother right if it is done with consent it is 312 if it is done without consent it is 314 3 313 313 without consent 314 causing death due to the causing death due to this criminal abortion if because of abortion if the pregnant mother dies that is punishable under 314 ipc right with consent 312 without consent 313 and criminal abortion resulting in death of the woman itself that is 314 ipc okay all these are ipc because we are talking about punishment there are few more terminologies we need to remember post you must child who is a post you must child a child born after the death of father child born after the death of father right and the child is said to have born for the dead father right they say that the child is born because of the dead father that's called posthumous child right then lokya lokya you know it's a vaginal discharge it is a sign of recent delivery it's a sign of recent delivery we have three important types in lokya lokya rubra lokya serosa and lokya alba okay remember this is the order this is the correct order of lokya they can ask you the order of lokya it is rubra serosa alba i have already told you the mnemonic it is republic of south africa republic of south africa okay r s a republic of south africa rubra serosa alba okay this is a sign of recent delivery now what is atavism atavism is the child does not resemble the parent but the child resembling grandparents when the child resemble grandparents we call it as atavism right that is atavism super fecundation super fecundation what is super fecundation super fecundation it is the fertilization of two ova 
fertilization of two ova in the same ovulatory cycle. In the same ovulatory cycle by two different duct of coitus. Right? Not by the same, eh? two different duct. That is superfecundation. Superfetation. What is superfetation? It is the fertilization of it is the fertilization of two ova in different ovulatory cycle. That means fertilization of ovum in a woman who is already pregnant. Right? Though theoretically it is not possible, where it is one of the very rare phenomenon, uh, women can become pregnant, she can ovulate and that can again fertilize. Okay? That is called superfetation. Superfecundation, superfetation. Right? Let us talk about live bond. There are few tests we have to discuss about live bond. Right? We will discuss about that. Let us say that this baby has not respired and this baby has respired. Right, there are two different babies. One baby has not respired, another baby has respired. First, we do what is called as Fodor's test. Remember, Fodor's test is based on weight of lungs. Right? If the baby has not respired, it will be 30 grams. If the baby has respired, it is 60 gram. 30 becomes 60, it becomes double. Why is it double? Because the vascularity increases, that's why the weight becomes increased. The next test is Plocutes test. Plocutes test is the ratio. It is basically the ratio of weight of lungs divided by weight of the baby. Right? Weight of lungs divided by the weight of the baby. This is called Plocutes test. The ratio would be 1 is to 70 will become 1 is to 35. Because of the increase in lung weight, the ratio 1 is to 70 becomes 1 is to 35. The next test is Redden's test. This test, we are checking the middle ear. We need to check the middle ear. See, normally the baby will be having gelatin-like substance in the ear, middle ear, as soon as it born. When the baby is just after birth, the baby will be having gelatinous substance in the middle ear. As the baby starts breathing, this gelatinous substance will be removed. It will be replaced by air. Right? So, if you can see the gelatin gelatin substance in the ear, that means baby has not given breathing. If you can find air in the middle ear, that means baby has given breathing. Okay? This is Redden's test. The fourth test is breast loss second life test this breast loss second life test here we are checking stomach flotation right we are checking stomach flotation right the baby as it swallows as it respires it also swallows somewhere we can see the presence of air bubble inside the gastric cavity. You put the stomach into the water. If the stomach is floating, that means baby has respired. Right? If the stomach is sinking, that means there is no air bubble inside the gastric cavity. That means baby has not respired. Right? So, this is breast loss second life test. The last but not least is hydrostatic test. Right? Hydrostatic test. This test we are checking lung flotation. We need to check the lung whether it floats or not. And it depends on the presence of residual air in the lung. Right? We are checking the residual air in the lung. When the baby starts breathing deep respiration, we can see the presence of residual air and we are checking with this hydrostatic test. Now, it all, the, the principle of hydrostatic test is the specific gravity of the lung. Right? The specific gravity of the lung when it is not respired, the un unrespired lung will be having specific gravity of 1.040. If you see the respired lung, if the baby has respired and you take the lung and check the specific gravity, the specific gravity will be 0 0.940. So, as the baby starts breathing, there is a reduction in the specific gravity from 1.040 to 0 0.940. So, that is why unrespired lung would sink in the water, whereas respired lung will float in the water. This, this is what we are checking. So, when the respired lung, when the lung pieces are floating in the water, we can say that the baby has respired. 
okay is very important now sometimes we get we can get false positive results sometimes we can get false negative result what is false positive the baby has not respired but still the lung pieces are floating that might be due to the presence of decomposing gas in case of putrefaction right what is what is false negative even though the baby has respired but the lung pieces are sinking right why is it due to it may be due to some infections like atelectasis pneumonia right it can be due to conditions like atelectasis and infections like pneumonia and you can also find that in pulmonary edema in all these conditions though the baby has respired the lung pieces would be sinking that is called false negative okay this is about hydrostatic test spurious pregnancy or phantom pregnancy spurious pregnancy or phantom pregnancy in phantom pregnancy or spurious pregnancy usually it occurs for the woman who is intensely desiring of getting a child right she will have all subjective symptoms of pregnancy like abdominal distension amenorrhea morning sickness all these symptoms might be there but she is not pregnant right but she is not pregnant the fetus will be negative she is not pregnant all these subjective symptoms may be due to some hormonal imbalances right so that is called spurious pregnancy or false pregnancy phantom pregnancy she is not pregnant subjective symptoms might be there that is due to hormonal disorder this is called spurious or false the most common type is semi lunar right with the first intercourse there can be rupture of hymen rupture of hymen with the first intercourse that is called defloration what is defloration defloration means it is a loss of virginity right with the first act there can be rupture of hymen what is the commonest site the commonest site of loci of the tear is 4 o'clock to 7 o'clock 4 o'clock to 7 o'clock position in other words it is posterior lateral in position right the hymenal hymenal tear will be located at the posterior lateral position this is when uh, this is where the hymen will get torn in case of uh, penile penetration penile penetration right and this type of tear can be examined by a hymenal tear can be examined by glaser keen rods right by which we can examine the rupture of the hymen right the edges can be easily visualized fine okay sometimes in spite of having sexual intercourse the hymen would be intact intact hymen after intercourse she might have had sexual intercourse but still the hymen is intact in what kind of cases the hymen would not rupture even after sexual intercourse if it is too thick if it is too loose or if the hymen is too elastic then the hymen would not rupture right this is called false virginity if the hymen is too thick too loose too elastic it will not rupture and she will be termed as false virgin right she will be termed as false virgin very important point moving on to sexual offenses see first we need to start with the rape right you know this defined by the section 375 ipc 375 ipc it defines rape right it's a very broad definition as per the new definition of rape it is not only the penetration of penis into the vagina it is a penetration of penis into the vagina anus mouth or urethra right it is the insertion of any foreign body or any part of the body into the vagina anus mouth or urethra application of mouth into the urethra anus or vagina will be considered as rape everything will be considered as rape it's a very broad definition right the minimum age for getting consent for sexual intercourse right the minimum age of consent it is 18 years right very important sex with a girl less than 18 years sex with a girl less than 18 years even with consent it will be termed as statutory rape right it will be termed as statutory rape very important less than 18 years less than 18 years even if she, if she gives consent it will amount to offense right 376 ipc it gives punishment for rape 
right if the rape is committed by a person